So I'm hoping you all have got your favourite hot or cold drink lined up and ready. So let's get going and see what we have lined up for today. So on the menu today, we'll have a quick chat with you about the KPIs and alerts to find out what you know so far and your key objectives for attending today. This will also help us in giving you some demonstrations of a KPI feature and how you can make it work with the alert system. And to follow, we'll open up and take any remaining questions as well as taking your questions throughout the session. These sessions are all about you to give you the opportunity to come forward and ask questions and get the information you need. With that in mind, let's hear from you. Take a few moments to think about what your main goal for attending this webinar is. Use the chat feature to tell us what you're most interested in seeing today. Give us a thumbs up on the different options or type us a message. If you have any other objectives, let us know in the chat and we'll try our best to cover it in today's session. What is it that you guys are looking for today? Tell me what you're most interested in seeing or what you really want to find out about. To learn more about KPIs, yes. Lovely, lovely. Um, got a thumbs up on the, the girl comment then. So it might be that most of you just want to see everything to do with the KPIs, see the benefits. <laughs> yeah, the alert system, general overview. Yes, you'll be getting that, yes. Oh, the system. oh lovely. Um, how you use the KPIs and something you're not using as much as you should. That's fine. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, guys, for getting involved. Here we go. So the KPIs are a feature available to all customers on version 4 or version 5 of Footfall. They help to set specific timescales for each form type, and they also allow you to track and be alerted of requests that have not been dealt with or exceeded your set timescales. KPIs and alerts can help your practice to perform better by prioritising your most important request types and by allowing you to track and be alerted to requests, giving you the confidence that a request or timescale is never missed or exceeded. The KPIs and alerts allow you to follow up and take action when required, and they build trust between the practice and the patient, ensuring the patient requests are dealt with within the timescales that the patient expects. Time for a little taster. I'm going to pass over to Nell, who is going to go through our demonstration for today. Lovely. Right, so I'm just going to try and share my screen. Let me know if you can't see it. There we go. Can everybody see that OK? Lovely. So you, I might have met some of you before. You might have heard me before during a training session. Um, but yes, I'm Nell. Um, hello, everybody. So I'm going to just show you the introduction to the KPIs, how to use the KPIs, and just generally, as everyone was saying, a general overview and how you can implement KPIs into your dashboard and get the full functionality and the benefits of using the lovely KPIs. So as you know, you can log in to the dashboard just as usual um, to get onto the dashboard. And at the moment, if you haven't got um, KPIs, this is probably a similar screen. It might be a little bit more busy than this, but you wouldn't have anything here about action required by. You wouldn't have any alerts. Um, everything is just lovely and green and it's just there. And you might get a note saying it's been assigned to you and so on. But this is generally the screen that you would see. However, if I log on to here, when you log into this, this is with KPIs um, activated. So we are just showing you every version of the KPIs and the alerts and the breaches. Um, but this is what you would see if you had the KPIs. So um, this is um, one of our test sites. So we're mimicking what we would see on an actual live practice site. So for me, the name and date of birth is withheld. Um, but for you, you would obviously see the name and date of birth here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go actually through the KPIs here, which you can access on the left hand side. Um, and then go through each section and how we would actually set these up so you can actually see on the home page and how you would benefit from the KPIs. You just click enable KPIs and the lovely list will load. So just as a, an important note, only administrators will have access to this. So if you have just normal users on the dashboard, they won't have access. However, any administrators or multi-site administrators that you have will have access to this. So just bear in mind um, for that. So if you're wanting to follow along 
with me during this, make sure you have admin rights um, so you can follow along. Otherwise, if you're assigning a member of staff um, in charge to setting up your KPIs, that they are also an admin rights. But just be aware that, for example, if you're the practice manager and you spent a long, lovely time um, organising and sorting these KPIs, that all of your other administrators would have access to this as well. So it might just need a bit of communication between you and your colleagues just to make sure who's touching what and when. Um, so to enable your K KPIs, you can have your work lists prioritised and you can track your patient requests um, via the KPIs. Um, so what I mean is if I go on to the new list. So on my work list, this is now categorised and ordered in priority of the breaches. OK, so rather than having it, for example, date ordered or um, however you have it at the moment on the work list, KPIs will organise it in regards to what the type of alert is. So if there is a KPI breach that is to do with you specifically, it will appear at the top. So, for example, something has been assigned to you for too long or you assigned it to somebody else and it's been with them for too long. So the KPIs are just really useful to organising your workload, prioritising patient requests, making sure nothing is sat on the dashboard for too long and it's just been left there and waiting because then patients lose trust in the system and they end up telephoning you anyway. So let's go into how you would set this up, what all of these actually mean, what that alert would mean. So if we go onto the KPIs, you can see that there's four columns. We've got new, working days, assigned, patient not read, and patient not replied. So let me explain new working days. So let's say a get help for any health problem form um, comes on to the dashboard, and I have set up my KPI as one working day. So if a get help for any health problem comes onto your dashboard and a receptionist hasn't assigned out and replied to the patient within one day, one working day, that is going to go into breach. OK, so you'll have a lovely alert come on to the actual episode itself. Um, I'll show you what that is. It come on to the about there. You would have alert reply to patient overdue. So that means a new episode has come in, a new form has come in, and somebody has not replied to the patient within that KPI that I've set of one working day. So a lovely alert will appear on the actual um, dashboard on the homepage, as well as going in to the episode, you'll have the breach here as well. And as well as if there is a breach in one of these columns, for example, the new, this lovely number will turn red. So at the moment, if you don't have your KPIs enabled, everything is green along the top. If you wouldn't ha don't have any breaches, they appear green. But the moment you get a breach in that column, this will turn red. OK, so if, for example, you say a breach has come on, the receptionist is coming onto here, they're going to reply. You can just click clear and that will remove the breach. OK, so that is just essentially new on um, the working days. You're going to want to make sure that whatever's reflected on the front end of your website is reflected on your KPIs. For example, if I go onto the front end, so all of your websites would look similar to this, we go onto the consulting room. At the moment, on my um, website, I've got get help for any health problem. We'll get back to you within two working hours. So this doesn't mean we will resolve the issue, resolve the um, query within two working hours. We just need to get that reply to the patient. We have first initial reply. We are saying we're going to get back to you within two working hours. So because that's on my front end, I'm going to want to reflect that on the back end. So that gives all of us a nudge that whenever a new get help for any health problem comes into the dashboard, we should be doing it within two hours. It might be at the moment, I know most people have it between one and two working days, so you can change it to one day, two days. But I always say for your, certainly your more important forms, the most frequently used forms, any longer than two working days, three days, patients will start losing trust in the system um, because they're waiting for a long time for that initial first response. So that's why KPIs are so important because it's alerting you and your colleagues that you're responding within that time. And especially if you're reflecting what is it 
it's saying on the front end, patients are going to be like, yes, the practice does get back to me within two working hours. And just as a reminder, it only will start tracking the time, the two days, the, the two hours and so on, when the practice is open. So that means if a patient submits a form at 10 p.m. at night, the countdown will only begin when the practice opens the next day. OK, so just bear in mind, it will always work it out on your practice opening hours and the practice opening hours is whatever is in here. OK, so make sure that this is up to date when you're um, dealing with your KPIs. OK, so remember, this type of breach will only appear for the first response to stop this breach. You do not need to complete the request. As I said, you don't need to completely resolve the request, close it, copy and paste it in the clinical system. It is just the initial first response. So that's what the new working days is. It might be that you don't want this alert on all of them. So you're forms that you don't get too many of might be some of your review forms you don't need to but we highly recommend certainly on the forms that you have a time frame on on the front end so as I said get help from the health problem maybe ask a receptionist a question ask a practice a question um, re test results requests that way you're just keeping in time the time and the patients are getting their trust and the KPIs um, are getting the most you're getting the most use of the KPIs OK, so that I've just gone through the new working days and how that would look. Does anybody have any questions about um, that column or anything I've just explained about? Everybody OK? Lovely. I'm going to take that lovely silence that everybody's OK. Brilliant. So what I'm going to move on to now is the next column, the lovely assigned column. OK, so the assigned KPI is for internal assigning. This KPI allows you to set default timescales for different forms and how long staff members will have to spend on them before they go into breach. So, for example, if I'm a receptionist and a contraceptive pill review comes in and I assign it to a nurse, so Nurse Jackie, and I have set this to one day, it will default to one day for Nurse Jackie to do what she needs to do. OK, so if she needs to respond to that patient, she'll have one day before it goes into breach. OK, so for example, if I go into my home page. As I can see here, assigned by me to Dr. Bird. So because, um, oh no, sorry, this, this is a better one. So it's been signed to me. When I've assigned something and it's been in there for too long, it hasn't had that response, it hasn't been dealt with, we're going to have an alert saying assigned for too long. And it will appear at the top of their work list. So whoever you assigned it to, it will go to the top of their work list saying it's assigned to for too long. And it will also appear at the top of my work list, the person who assigned it for too long, because it's giving me a nudge and it's giving them a nudge that it needs to be dealt with. So it might be that I need to go in and assign it to somebody else because, for example, Dr. Bird or somebody isn't available or they're having um, the afternoon off or I just need to assign it to somebody else or maybe even a generic group. So rather than assign it to an individual doctor, I might now want to go in and assign it to all of the doctors because now I don't mind who deals with it. It just needs to be dealt with. So that is a really useful KPI to make sure that things that are being assigned are being dealt with within that certain period of time. They're not being sat in there for too long. Somebody who you've assigned it to hasn't necessarily forgotten that's been on there or they haven't signed on to the dashboard in a couple of days because it will give you an alert, the person who has signed it, they haven't actually responded to the patient yet. So I would really utilize that assigning um, option here. So you can set it as default here so you might be, for example, you get help for any health problems and things. You can set up the default. And so I'm just going to go in and show you what I mean by default and how you can set it up, because you might want to have the default of six hours, but a specific episode you might want to give that doctor. Actually, I need you to do this in an hour. So if we go on to new and we'll go on to um, this lovely get help for any health problem. I'm going to click assign here. So I'm going to assign it to, for example, um, Dr. Anna, give it in a note. 
And then this alert, if not action, this is the KPI. And this is going to automatically default to whatever was in the KPI default for this form. So at the moment, in the KPIs, get help for any health problem, the assigned KPI is currently set at one hour. If I come onto here, I can either keep it as one hour and just very quickly click assign, done. Otherwise, it might be Dr. Anna Consult. It's, it's not a priority. Let's say, let's give a let's give a one working day. So I can just change it. Then I'll click assign. So it'll take it out of everybody's new list, move it into Dr. Anna's work list. And then if she hasn't dealt with it within one working day, she'll get an alert, a breach, and I'll get an alert, a breach. And then I can go in and give Dr. Anna a nudge or likewise um, assign it to somewhere else. OK, so um, as I said, this is just overriding whatever you'd set up in the KPIs. OK, so th that is the new and the assigned. Does anybody have any questions or issues about anything that I've said so far? Does that make sense what I'm saying? So if, I, if you were to log off, you could now go onto your dashboard and set this up for the new and the assigned. Alexia, thanks. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Alexia. Is everybody else OK? A few people are. So now. Oh, we have some somebody typed in. in. Just make sure. Yeah, I think yes, we're going to move on. Lovely. Right, we'll move Thumbs on. Up. Thumbs up. Thanks. Perfect. OK. So another alert as well is your weight. I'm going to come back to your, the patient read and the patient replied. I'm actually going to focus more on the part and waiting because you can also, when you're coming in to an episode, you can actually make sure that you've got an alert for when you move things into part and waiting. OK, that, it's so useful to have this because I don't know about any of you, whether you have instances where somebody has put something into part and forgotten about it. They've gone on, put it on there. They've gone on to lunch. They've come back and they've absorbed with another part of their work or whatever. And then you come back onto part. You realize, oh, no, that's been there for a day. These KPIs can stop that because you can set yourself an alert. OK, so. Um, for example, we give it a reason for the part, give myself an alert. So I am moving into part because I need to go and speak to an administrator. I can just give myself one working day. OK, so um, if I need to do longer, if I need to do shorter than that, I can. Um, but this is here where you would set that up and then I would move it into part. Once it's in part, you will then, if it's been parked for too long, if it's exceeded that breach, you will get the alert parked for too long. So if anybody goes on to part, they can actually see an alert that's parked for too long. It also go into your work list as well. If something has been waiting for too long or unread for too long, this is a slightly different alert, but it will come in to your work list. That's why KPIs are so useful because it prioritizes your work list. It's going to nudge you for things that have been waiting for parked for too long. So similar to how I showed you for parked, it also does it for waiting. So if you go into wait, give yourself that wait reason and put it into no alert and give yourself an alert. So waiting will obviously waiting for an external reason or waiting for the patient. So give yourself an alert and then if it breaches that, it will give you an urge to go back to the patient, ask the patient what you're needing to. And remember, another way you can do this is if you're replying to the patient and you're allowing the patient to respond, reply to your response um, and you're allowing the patient to to um, send files. Here is where you can require the patient to reply. OK, and then this is where you can give yourself another alert. OK, this is where you can give yourself um, back KPI alert if no patient reply in require patient reply. And then you can move it into send and wait. So it moves it into the waiting column and then it will breach if it gets past this section here. Otherwise, you can move it into send and it will still stay in the new column. 
So when I go back to the KPIs, just following on from that, we've got the patient not read and the patient not replied. So we do recommend leaving this as, as standard, leaving these as no alert as the default, because as I've just shown you, this is going to be more patient specific. So for each episode, you're going to want to know if that patient has read it or replied, and you can set yourself a KPI for that specific episode. So as I just showed you, that get help form has come in. I need to know if the patient's not read this. I need to know if the patient's not replied. So I'm going to set it as a manual alert on that episode rather than having it as a default here. OK, because otherwise this number will start to creep up and up and go into breach if you have set this as an alert already. It might be useful to you. Um, maybe on your get help for any health problem because you would like to know if the patients aren't reading this within a certain period of time. So in which case you might have no alert on everything else, but you'll get help for any health problems. Um, but, but by deciding on default, certainly the short ones, you can mean your counter for unread by patient can, as I was saying, get clogged up very easily. Um, the same applies with the patient not replied. So I'd always leave this as no alert, but as I showed you, you go on to the actual form itself. So let's say this specific form, I need to know if the patient's not read it. So I would do it here. OK, so alert if this response has not been read in one day, so on and so forth. And then when that goes into breach, you'd see it by unread by patient here as well in your, as well in your work list. OK, I mean, the patient not reply KPI is helpful when you are giving a patient a time scale to reply back to you. So, for example, you'll get help forms and you're asking them to send in a photo of their ailment or your new patient registration form. You're saying if we do not receive ID from you within four days, we're going to put this on hold and you may need to send in a new one. That's when the KPIs um, will be really useful. OK, um, but likewise, it will be useful when you can set it for each individual patient response. That's when um, you can do it here. OK, um, so just to summarise the KPIs, it is really useful to have your KPIs because it keeps that track. OK, it keeps track of your timescales. It's allowing you and your colleagues to respond to patients within a certain period of time. It's keeping what you've promised on the front end. So, for example, your contact the practice form. Um, that will go here. So two working days. So we're going to make sure that we're applying to patients within two working days because otherwise we'll get that breach. Likewise, the assignee signed section, you're making sure things that you are signing out are being dealt with. And if it's not, you're getting that breach, you're getting that alert and it's showing you um, that you need to go in and assign it to somebody else or giving that person a nudge to deal with it. And the patient not read and patient not replied, you can set that up individually on each episode giving yourself an alert and as you can see here um, the alert for um, a sign too long will always appear at the top of your work list likewise alert reply to patient overdue is when it's a new episode that's come in and nobody's replied to it within the breach likewise um, if you've assign something and you need the patient to read it within a certain period of time and they haven't, this will be the alert, alert unread for too long. And likewise, if you've moved something into park, this will be the alert that appears for part for too long. OK, so that's why this work list actually works far better with the KPIs on because it's helping you to prioritise when you log in. I mean, this is an excessive amount because obviously we're wanting to show you how many KPIs types there are but now I will see I need to deal with this one because the action was required by here so I need to go through this one and then this one and then work my way down the work list okay so does anybody have any issues or queries or questions about anything I can see um, Nikita was replying as I was talking um, does anybody have any questions um, 
for the recording yeah. did we to go through that <laughs> yeah. yeah as i say we can cover um what sarah asked us in the chat just in case anybody hasn't seen it um so sarah asked if you want to check a patient has read um the fact that they have an appointment booked do you need to just send rather than send and close um if it is just sent where does the form sit whilst you're waiting to see if they've read it um, the response to that was that the if you did not press send and close, the form will sit in your new column. Um, but you can always pop it into wait if you are hoping for a response. Are there any other questions? Excellent. I think I've explained every, everything that I've needed to. If, if someone's looked at this and thought I, I have there's something I've missed, please let me know. Um, otherwise, lovely. OK, so if I stop sharing and then um let's talk let me know if you can see my screen so we do have quite a bit of time left um so if anybody's got any questions just let us know um but just to let you know when enabling the kpis or making changes to the kpis the changes will only be reflected on new requests that are received and won't show on existing requests received prior to the change. So if you already have requests on your dashboard and you go back up this session and turn your KPIs on and set them up, the ones that are already on your dashboard will not be affected by your new KPIs, only ones set up afterwards. I hope that makes sense. Excellent, thanks Kia. Just for a quick recap today, um, you have seen our key performance indicators. Hopefully we've been able to cover everything that you were looking for. Um, we've done a bit of a live demonstration so you can see how it works in practice. Um, and we have opened up for questions. Um, but that does conclude today's session. Once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us today and for your participation in the session. We hope you found it useful and worthwhile. If you've had any ideas on future topics for these events throughout today's session, you can let us know in the chat now before you leave, or you can send us an email at training at circumpractice.co.uk. Don't forget to keep an eye on our Facebook community page um, for announcements and future events. We will pop both of those links in the chat for you. And if you need a recap on some of the content covered in today's session, you can head, head over to our YouTube page to look at our KPI tutorials. They will also be left in the chat. Nell and I will hang around for a couple more minutes in case you have any questions. Otherwise, thank you for coming and you're free to leave the session. Thanks again, guys.